biomedical equipment technology. You might not know what that is all about. Well, it's, a, it's an electronics background field, okay? You come into the program, you're going to learn how electronic works. Men and women could understand electronics. It provides a, 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 uh, an opportunity for the individual to better himself because if you start looking around, the better paying jobs today out there is in the technical world, in the electronics world. Because there are many fields that require somebody to repair stuff. How many, uh, if you look at a doctor's office, he'll have medical devices. Medical devices are important because it, it assists the doctor in, in uh, looking at prognosis, uh, looking in the insight that, that he can make uh, uh, prescribed medicine or have an idea what's going on behind you. So his, his prognosis and his diagnostics is based on what the equipment is allowing him to understand. Like uh, you might have a, a, a heartbeat, but you really don't know what is going on in the heart. With electronics, you can actually pick up the electrical conduction that exists in the heart, and if there are any damages in the, in the heart because of myocardium, then the conduction will be a little off or on, so this way he can have a better idea as what condition the heart is in by just looking at an ECG. So machines like this is what assists doctors, nurses, maintain, you know, the health of the patients while they're interned in the hospital. And the biomed technician, that's what he does. He, he understands, he will learn electronics, then he will apply the electronics background into the medical devices. And if, if you can more or less think about this, no matter what condition the economy might be in, people still will get sick. As a matter of fact, people will get more sick if the economy is, is worse because they get nervous, they they lose their jobs, some people, you know, get, wind up in hospitals because of uh, uh, preoccupations of, uh, you know, what am I going to do? So depressions and, and so on, and they wind up getting uh, admitted into hospitals. And hospitals, they, they're open 24-7, but most of the technicians that work in the hospital as a biomed tech, his schedule typically is 8 to 5. And he gets to go home Monday through Friday. If he's got to come on weekends, usually it's because he's on call and and some incident happened and they, they are needing some devices and he'll show up. Uh, the biomed tech are sometimes given options as to what kind of hours you want to work. Like you want to come in at 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning, 7 or 8. That means if you show up, if you're the early bird, you show up at 5, 5.30 and you get to go home at 3. And that's the kind of schedule I will, always would pick. Uh, I would get done, uh, I would get there around 5, 5.15, get it going start my daily uh, routine of preventive maintenance and um, checking whatever calls came in at night. By the time it's 10 o'clock, I probably have done a lot of more work than other people that come in at 8. So as a result, I minded hospitals by myself. I, uh, I spent 10 years at Nat Medical Center and I was their only tech. And when I say their only tech, I, I'm, I'm really meaning their only tech. Like, you got a 250-bed hospital, and every single room has a television, so I take care of televisions, too. And along televisions, you got a cafeteria with all kinds of uh, uh, electrical grills. I took care of the kitchen's electrical grills, or the ovens, or the microwaves, or the refrigerators, and all these things, because you do learn quite a bit of electronics. It doesn't mean that you're just going to deal with medical devices. You get to deal with all kinds of electronic devices. Uh, nurse call systems are electronics. You push this button, you're able to hear the patient from a certain room. Since it's electronics background, I, could, I maintain those, those nurse uh, call systems. The uh, systems that they install on every, every single exit in elevators, it's a baby uh, alarm system where the baby's walking around, or, or not walking around, but he gets, you know, wheeled around. And they usually put a bracelet on his uh, wrist or ankle, and that sensor picks up that frequency coming from the bracelet, and it's supposed to alarm and put out a coat pink. Well, I took care of that system. So biomed doesn't mean necessarily that you'll be working in a hospital just doing medical devices. You're going to be doing a whole bunch of other things. Anything that is electrical, anything that's electronics, you can probably figure out how it works and how to repair it. When you come into 
TSTC Harlingen, you join the Biomed program, you're going to learn that there are many opportunities for the Biomed tech other than just healthcare. If we look up and down the valley, there's uh, three, three airports. The people that maintain the x-ray systems as you go in, you put your baggages and it goes through a conveyor belt, and there's an x-ray system that sees what's in your... It's a Biomed tech taking care of the x-ray systems at this airport, the Bronzeville and the McAllen, the Laredo. Some of the airports in the Austin area and the Houston area, they're, they're TSTC graduates out of the Biomed program. If you go looking around in San Antonio, there is this Toyota manufacturing plant where there's at least two or three biomets taking care of the robots that actually do the actual welding. So you graduate from this program, you're not only limited to the healthcare, you, you, you can go into other industries because the more that we move forward, the more electronics applications that are being implemented in industries. We have other students installing uh, wireless, wireless uh, uh, alarm systems. If you have a small convenience store, by your insurance is going to require you that you put some kind of surveillance system. Okay? Biomedtechs can do that. Because I do have a couple of guys installing surveillance systems and they're making fairly good money. It's wireless stuff. You don't have to be wiring anything. It is all worked through frequencies and telemetry. And you're hooked up and that their hookups is a, it takes them about an hour and a half, two hours to install a system. And that's the opportunities that opens up when you have an education and you have a skill in the electronics world. Okay? Uh, if you go by the, uh, the, the port in uh, Bronzeville or the crossings in, uh, in Matamoros, there is a couple of biomed techs looking at the trucks as they go by because they do go by and there's x-rays. So biomedical is not only just medical devices. It's across the board, anything. It's up to you. Like I told you at the beginning that I worked at a hospital and not only was I their biomed, I was also their electronic tech. I was their welder. I was their electrician. I was sometimes even their incinerator man. Because you got to develop a work ethic that you're part of a system and anything you can do to contribute, to, you know, to move ahead and learn, you go for it. Do not start taking that mentality, no, no I, can, I only do this thing, because then you stay that small all the time. The more technical that you grow, the more valuable you become to some industries, okay? And that's what I want to pass across you guys. If you guys don't have a skill, TSTC is a place to come and find one, okay? Look for a skill that's going to open up the horizons for better opportunities in many fields, not just in, in one area, because you never know. You work here, but you qualify to apply elsewhere, too. And that's the thing that, that, that I'm all for. Not only do I want you to learn certain things, I want to convince you that this is not the only profession that you can obtain after you graduate. You could work for other industries because of the skills that you're going to develop. This is still a technical school. And if you have no expertise, well, here's where you start to develop the beginnings of expertise. We have TSTC graduates that, that have been out there in a, in a field for 10 years or 12 years or even 5 years. And you get to realize that those, the, some of those guys are still very, fairly young. And they've already got skills. They specialize in MRI systems, in CAT scan systems. Others specialize in telemetry systems. So those are specialties that are acquired because of the beginning of a biomed degree. The more qualities and the more skills that you develop, the better that you're valuable and the more monies that you eventually will. In other words, you get to the point where they're hiring you because of what is inside of you. You're not just another person, okay? They hire you because you're knowledgeable in certain areas that is important for them, okay? And that's what I want you guys to understand, that you come to school, you get the basic fundamentals of what is it you're going to do. And when you get these fundamentals, I want you to understand that there are many industries that you can seek and be treated and get fairly paid. Because I'm not going to say, okay, when you graduate from Biomed, you're only going to work in hospitals. No, that's the last thing I want you to know. 
I want you to know that th not only the healthcare industry will be looking for you, but there's also the securities industries and the uh, aviation, because everything, every, every day, ever, ever since 9 11, industries just had to take other avenues because there are other professions now that got developed and there are no technicians. No technicians. There is nobody that says, oh, I went to school to become a, 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 uh, a securities uh, or, or a, a specialist in installing all these kinds of videos. And there is none. So they're going to look for that one individual that has the skills in, in troubleshooting and electronics. And then you become a specialist in that. There are kids, uh, young kids, I call them kids because they're 26, 27 years old, and they have associate's degree in biomed. But when you start now realizing the extra advanced uh, expertise that they received in the industry, well, that's great because, you know, this guy is now considered a specialist in, in uh, MRI systems, or he's a specialist in uh, uh, that other system. It's uh, nuclear medicine. Or this guy is strictly a specialist. He's a general med, general biomed, but he specializes in all kinds of dialysis systems. Well, believe me, there's not a lot of people walking around out there that specialize in these systems. So they become very unique. And that's how that individual becomes valuable. Not only for the people that send them and spend the money to get them educated, but for other industries that are interested in this expertise that you have. And it's good to know that they're hiring you and they're giving you what you want or you're asking because they're interested in what you can do for them. You're not just another part of a huge, you know, uh, uh, people. I was raised in Westlake, but I've lived 30 some years in McKellen. And I knew that any time, any time that I needed an extra help, like uh, somebody to go help me put a fence up. I would go to 17th Street or Bicentennial, and believe me, my little pickup would get filled with at least 15 people. And you would say, no, 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 I just need one guy. One guy. And it would be another 30 minutes until 14 of them get off. Because <laughs> one is telling the other, no, you get off. I got first. No, no, you win. Until you got that one. And then he asked you, what are we going to do? He says, we're going to go put up a fence. He's never put up a fence before. But then again, he don't want to get off. And you can tell right out of the bat, because right out of the bat, he's going to tell you, well, how much is he going to pay? He don't know how to put up a fence, but he wants to know how much he's going to get paid. I can say right there, and then you don't need to get off then. Because what I'm needing him for, he has no expertise. But I got a heart that big, and I says, okay, almost, I'll teach you how to do it. And... And he goes out there and he works like about half a day. And I'm usually going to give him $30, $35. Work half a day. And this guy over here, he's working for minimum wage. What is minimum wage? $7.25. $7 and he's going to work for eight hours at $7.25. Why? Because 